Hey gang, how's it going? Happy holidays. How are you doing? Um, I wanted to do a quick video uh, showcasing, um, first of all, some sales that I think you should check you should check out um as well as some games that i picked up during the sale as well as maybe some things you can expect from my channel next year um and maybe talk a little bit about what i'm going to be prioritizing in terms of enjoying my hobby um i hope you're having a good time and i hope that everything is smooth sailing for now so um let me let me uh highlight some some games i think deserve a bit more attention so a few games i picked up during the sale i'm gonna go ahead and like do this really shoddily you'll have to forgive me but um i really wanted to like shout out this game jelly car worlds i have very limited play with this version of it but i have played previous iterations and uh, this game is really really lovely and it's like less than the price of uh well your standard starbucks coffee and certainly it deserves more um you know <laughs> it, it deserves more support than starbucks i would say uh maybe that's hot take but anyway it's got a level editor now and it's it's coming along the uh, dev has been putting a lot of care and love into this game and it really shows uh, i've been kind of checking out some of their devlogs and it really looks great um so i'm looking forward to playing some of this i don't think uh, i'll be doing much of this for the channel because i don't think it would do very well but i still want to give it some love so you should check out jelly car worlds uh, i definitely want to give an extra shout out to control alt ego um though it is possibly one of my worst performing series on the channel i do intend on finishing it and um it really deserves more love um this is such a such a wonderful game and it's like honestly i, I feel like uh you know it's it's a very cool thing now to define what is and what is not an immersive sim i'm gonna say a hot thing about uh control alt ego i think it's you know um it, it transcends the genre somewhat maybe it's inspired by the immersive sim but i think it does some things that i've never seen any other game do before so I think it uh, it deserves to. It's almost a genre defining, and it's it's a, it's its own thing, and it does it very very well. So I can't. I honestly can't uh, sing the praises more uh, for Control Alt Ego. So definitely check that out. It's only what thirty five percent off. Um, thirty five percent is a great deal. Definitely check this game out. Um, what's next? Uh, Adam RPG. True to grad, I have played very little of this game. As you can probably see, I've got 2.4 hours, but what I have played, I really liked. And in fact, the reason I have such uh, little time on it is because I had to stop immediately and and uh, just kind of commit myself to potentially doing a series for this game. I really liked it instantly, and it's such a really good take on uh, basically this world. It's very much a, a stalker-esque world, um, but it's more of a a CRPG, in fact, it says right there, CRPG, it's inspired by things by Fallout. So it's like a top-down RPG, um, but uh, it's got some great mood and great uh, kind of like dialogue and, and world building, and I'm really excited to play more of this, so I wanted to uh, give it a shout out. It, what is it at? 60% off, like it's such a ridiculously good deal for that. Um, I wanted to shout out Moonring because good lord, the game is still free. Um, I had such a good time with this game and uh, I definitely recommend having a look at my series. Maybe don't watch too much of it if you intend on playing this game because this is the kind of game that you're going to get more from uh, if you, you know, go through the discovery process yourself. Um, it's not necessarily as discovery rife as, uh, say, something like an Outer Wilds or an, uh, a Return of the Oprah Din, but it definitely has stuff in it that are, you know, you know, discovery worthy. So, um, and this this is a, such a great example of modernization of like classic kind of games done right where it focuses on uh you know the kind of quality of life features we expect from something that comes out today but with some of the things that make us nostalgic for games we used to enjoy and i really like this in fact it single-handedly got me to uh pick up the ultima games i I've, i now have ultima one to seven uh on my gog and i might even do a series on a couple of those so uh i'm looking forward to that moon ring it's free you have no excuse. 
It's so good. It is really just it's it's all of that. Please, please try it. It's so good. Um, I definitely want to I listen, I, I know that uh, Rain World it, like it's it's a cult favorite. It's very it's it's got like a, a very the, the true meaning of cult following. I think that the uh, fan base for Rain World are very uh, almost rabid, but um, there's a good reason for that. This game really is all that. It really deserves all the praise it gets, every single bit of praise. Um, I, uh, with my friend Birdie, we, we played through every single campaign in the Standard and also Downpour, which is basically, um, if you have Rain World, you should definitely pick up uh, Downpour. It's $15, but it's basically like five or six campaigns. Um, it's a prequel and sequel, but Rain World itself is definitely worth the, the price of 60% you know, off. Like it's, it's such an amazing game. Um, it is punishing. It is very punishing, um, but it's worth it. It's one of the few games that really uh, makes me, I don't know, I wouldn't say it frustrates me, but it definitely kicks you while you're down. But you can't help but smile, I think, um, because of just the audacity of it. Rain World, um, it's it's a ridiculous achievement of a game. I can't imagine trying to make something like this. Never mind, like, the, just the way it looks, the way it presents itself, the world building. Um, but also just the way you move around, the way you interact with that world, the way you the world interacts with you, it's it's uh, really something that defies a lot of genre, and I can't recommend it enough. It's, it's stupidly good. Um, absolutely. If you don't have Rain World, you should check it out. I know everyone's recommending... Whoops, that's not the right game, but hey, I, maybe that one's good. Uh, everyone's recommending Against the Storm, so it's like, you know, it might fall on deaf ears, but if you have any interest in at all in City Builders, you should check out uh, Against the Storm. It's a very good game. I'm really going to leave it at that. I mean, uh, I think that everything that ha you know has been said, everything that can be said has been said about Against the Storm. It's won awards It's for good reason. It it's a very, very compelling game. Definitely, if you struggle with it, if you bounced off of it, um, maybe look up a couple of tip videos. I definitely did. I kind of bounced off of it, and then I watched uh, a couple of like here. Here's a few things that you might be missing. Um, I think it could uh, maybe use one or two more accessibility updates just to make certain features more pronounced or at least like point you in the right direction. But they're doing that. They've actually added a tutorial. So like, um, I, you know, the people working on Against the Storm, they really know what they're doing and they're making this game amazing. So Against the Storm, definitely check it out. Lunacid. Um, Everyone, it's another, like, everyone's recommending Lunacid, but, I, you know, I am everyone as well, and I really enjoyed Lunacid. Um, you know, I, I haven't beaten it, but uh, even even if I stopped here with, like, six hours, I would say, yeah, even if you, if you stop halfway through, it's still a game you should check out. It's one you should experience, because uh, it's one of those games that, like... This is a novel experience. Like maybe you've played things like it. You're definitely, you know, if you've played its influencers, you'll have played games like it, but you haven't played this. This is, you know, a very fresh take and very worth your time. Um, so I, I was very happy to uh, to finally get into Lunacid and, and play it. I, I still intend to finish finish it. It's, it's such a good one. Um, I can't honestly recommend this one enough, and it's on sale for such a ridiculous deal. 75% uh, off Battletech. Um, I don't know what to, how to really convince you on this one. If It's such an easy game to overlook if you're not really into these kind of games. Um, if you're not into XCOM games, then you might miss it. If you are into XCOM games, you might miss it. I honestly don't like XCOM uh, for a number of reasons, but I loved this game. Um, I do like tactics and I do like RPGs, and I think that uh, it's fair to call Battletech a very good tactics RPG, um, you know, for a number of reasons, but it's it's so good. And there's also a very, there's some very good um, overhaul mods that, you know, basically bring it closer to the actual tabletop game. 
uh, in terms of its mechanics and there's you know also some like flavor and there's even one uh, and I, I am I am planning on doing as this will be in the next portion of this uh, you know video but I am planning to do more with Battletech so um, this game is is so stupidly good and um, I'm really glad that I got to experience this version of it because I don't think I ever would have jumped into the tabletop game for various reasons but um, this was just such a wonderful way to, to actually experience that world and I'm very very grateful to uh, to Brian uh, Bucklew for for actually introducing me to the game and and teaching me how to play it otherwise I probably would have missed it and so that's why I have to recommend it as much as I am to you because you could so easily miss it and it is such a fantastic game uh, and that's such a ridiculous price for it. So um, I am going to uh, recommend Inkbound with a caveat. I, I know that uh, it's 20 bucks is not a um, huge price to pay for a game like this. It is an early access, but I also understand when you're in, like, you know, like this is going to sound privileged, but like, you know, in my kind of position, I definitely look to maximize how much I'm spending you know like how much i'm getting for how much i'm spending and i know that 20 dollars can seem like a high price for a game like this but i mean it's the monster train devs and i have to recommend inkbound uh not just because it is a good game but because the devs uh did a very good job of basically eating crow <laughs> like they they made a couple of mistakes with the monetization with inkbound and i was pretty vocal about those things i didn't like what they did when they first released the game but then they uh, listened to the feedback, they, they took those criticisms to heart, and then they uh, basically completely reversed all of it. And, and uh, I think that Inkbound has um, like benefited largely from that decision. And I have to say, if someone makes a mistake, if they apologize, if we're, if we're not big enough to accept that apology, then there's then there's basically we're not leaving any room for people to to improve themselves and i think that inkbound is a game that is improving and i think it is a very good game um and i really uh I, i'd feel bad if i didn't recommend it because it is it is all that it is good um i have i've been vocal a few times this year about my uh, apprehension for the uh vampire survivors uh basically infestation like there's it, it's it really is like it feels like i'm uh, you know every single day for a few months this year i was basically seeing another one and there's like a good hundred of them 200 of them um i'm not gonna bore you with that conversation but i will say that gunlocked um i think it was my favorite of the survivor like games and i actually put more hours into this than vampire survivors maybe that's you know a fault of mine maybe that uh you know that's a cell phone but uh i i just really liked it i thought this was such a good version of that and it still i think feels novel compared to um so many of the survivor likes that didn't really innovate on the genre um not not throwing any shade but i i just I thought this was the most novel version and I think it stands up on its own two legs. It's a uh, $2 Canadian. I should say that these are all Canadian prices, but uh, you know, so it's probably like a dollar or 25 cents for you. I don't know. Um, I, I love to make fun of our currency. Um, I want to recommend Marble It Up. Uh, you can get the ultra version for 20 bucks, which is steam deck verified um i have actually played it on steam deck and uh, it works quite well and it's a really good game if you have any fondness for these kinds of games i know it's a, almost its own genre you could call them like kind of technical platformers but like it's not really that they're just they're marble games i don't know what to call like you know uh like uh um monkey ball you know there's there's been a few marble games and um like the developers of Marble It Up uh, made some of my favorite marble games when I was playing marble games as a wee lad. And uh, so Marble It Up is a very, very wonderful uh, successor to all of that. And it's it's definitely worth your attention. Even if you're if you have no idea what the, what the heck is a marble game, it's just it's just a I don't know, you're a marble and it's fun. And this game is so colorful and, and fun to look at and um it's it's frustrating but it's also really compelling and you just can't help but like try to get a faster and faster time and 
um, try and get, you know, all of the rewards. And hey, our marbles have hats now. I love it. You know, uh, everything needs hats, I suppose. Uh, this game has a very small number of reviews comparatively. That's because it was actually kind of remade or re-released, which is a weird one. Um, I don't even know how to find the original one, but to anyone who owned the original one got Ultra, which was kind of nice. I really appreciated that. Anyway, marble it up. It's really good. Uh, I liked it a lot. I'm going to recommend Stacklands, even though it exploded in popularity so much that you probably have already heard it and, um, you know, but it's seven dollars and uh, you can get the DLC. What the hell? Am I? The DLC is four dollars. I haven't played the DLC despite owning it. I actually tried to do a series uh, with the DLC and I don't know. I feel like having the same file, the same save file over multiple updates and now DLCs uh, finally kind of uh, killed the series because I couldn't really understand how to get to the new content. So that kind of killed the series, but I'm still determined to potentially come back to this one. Stacklands is a really good game. It's a very good uh, take on the form format. I mean, I, I feel like it almost made its own genre. I know it was um, kind of inspired by Cultist Simulator, but it felt very distinct from Cultist Simulator. And um, I, I think it did a very good job of making this kind of new genre very accessible while also staying very uh, strategic and um, challenging. Like it's it's actually quite difficult as you know, the sock pop is, is the sock pop way. So um, Stacklands was really good. I really recommend it. I want to recommend uh, Patch Quest. I have played uh, not a lot of this comparatively speaking, but I've, what have it, uh, of what I've played, I've really enjoyed and um, it's it's just a very good game. I think what I really appreciate about Patch Quest is it, it looks at the roguelike genre or what has become the roguelite genre and recognizes it more as an RPG um, or at least like a, a kind of arcade RPG rather than trying again to do the roguelike thing, but basically have so much meta progression that it's its its own kind of strange mutant that doesn't necessarily understand its own influences. I, that's a hot take for me, but I think what I'm saying about Patch Quest is that it understands that its own gameplay loop is more similar to an RPG than it is to a, a roguelike, and then kind of like leans into that punch rather than um, trying to sort of adhere to a genre that doesn't necessarily work for it. Um, Patch Quest is, is really good and it's a game you could probably beat in a relatively small amount of time, um, but this is a game I, I intend on actually beating uh, and uh, I, I, I enjoy, I've, I've enjoyed what I played. It's, it's really quite good. Um, what was it? Tunic? I, listen, I know that some of these games are ones that everyone recommends, so maybe they're not super original, but you know, sometimes all it takes is, uh, you know, for four people to tell you a game is good and then maybe the fifth one they'll finally convince you, you know, like uh, Tunic was a game I actually overlooked. I bounced off of it after playing the demo and then uh, Friendo Birdie um, basically said, hey, the demo sucked, try it again. And uh, and that was enough for me to say, hey, you know, OK, I'll, I'll give it another go. Um, it's. Uh, it definitely wears some influences on its sleeve, but I, I think that it's a mistake to maybe look at Tunic and say, oh, hey, it's The Legend of Zelda. There's definitely some stuff there, but it felt closer to something like uh, Fez or like uh, classic adventure games, even more classic maybe than Zelda, than, you know, like it, 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 it has deeper influences, I think, than just Zelda. Um, you could definitely say like original Legend of Zelda is very much like in its DNA. Um, that sort of sense of exploration, that sense of discovery is very much like in this game. It's it's much closer to something like Outer Wilds in terms of like how much discovery there is in this game. In fact, it maybe even goes further than Outer Wilds in terms of like how, mu how deep it goes. Um, but yeah, Tunic is a really, really good game and uh, definitely worth playing if you if you've looked at it and overlooked it or if you've, uh, you know, kind of like crossed it off your list as being like, eh, I don't I don't want like another uh, death store. It's this is not a death store, right? This is not just another uh, like kind of action Metroidvania ish game. This is something 
different and is very special and please don't overlook it because it's worth it um i know it's uh i know listen i i know i understand but um i really just want to mention disco elysium uh because it is it's a really good price I, I this is a game i intend on finishing i actually want to um do some off like on camera uh episodes and and actually finish my playthrough uh for anyone who are watch who was watching my streams and was kind of disappointed i stopped um i understand and uh disco elysium is one of those games i i fully intend on actually finishing in fact it might even be uh what i do after control to ego um because it's it really is worth it i can't really like i'm not gonna say much more than that because i think it's it's recommended it's on everyone's recommendation list um and so it almost feels wrong for it to not be on mine as well it's a very very good game and it really like anything i say about it will feel um like it's almost undervaluing it like it, it really is the game it is one of the games of all time um it is i definitely want to mention desktop dungeons rewind it's another pricey one i know that uh, if your budget is tight and you only got you know so much you can throw down on it i i but um it's a really good game it's just really f fantastic like if you're into traditional roguelikes i think you'll enjoy it if you're into kind of puzzle games i think you'll enjoy it it's a difficult game uh and it's one that you could potentially bounce off of but i think there's just so much going on in this and it it's a, it's like there's so much stuff in this game there's so much content there's so much um like replayability uh you know you've got different gods you've got different classes and races that you can mix and match together you've got um kind of this really compelling uh progression system where you're building up this town uh, I actually do recommend the original as well. Um, it, they're kind of different in very subtle ways, but I think it's worth mentioning. I, I actually, in some ways, prefer the original still, um, but I, I do really like this. I, I like the remake enough to recommend it as as the recommendation. I think it's it's worth it. Um, I, I think they could have done more, but I still really like it. And uh, Desktop Dungeons remains one of my favorite games in terms of like, uh kind of a turn-based you know uh, traditional roguelike it's it's not quite that but that's kind of why i like it is it's it's its own thing um but yeah tr uh, desktop dungeons rewind is really good and lastly um i wanted to recommend creeper world which is a really weird one um i'm gonna recommend creeper world 3 because that's the one i've played the most of at least on steam i have four and i've been meaning to play it this is a game I played way more uh, back when it was kind of a flash game and I played it on like, uh, you know, either uh, Congregate or Armor Games or Newgrounds. Um, this is a really weird game. It's almost a tower defense. It's almost an RTS. It's almost a lot of things, but it's got a lot of uh, strategy and um, it's a really creative game. Like this is one of those games I love to jump into and like throw down some some uh, a strategy or like try and mix and match certain things and figure things out um it's got a actually strangely very compelling story uh that develops between missions um it it doesn't look like much but you're basically just trying to prevent some slime mold from advancing and and that's really the long and short of it you've got different kinds of uh, nodes and towers and uh, methods of attack um and uh it's it's a game that has a kind of a very strange dimensionality to it like the slime is almost three-dimensional but not quite which is strange it almost is like a dwarf fortress thing kind of going on um they did actually go fully 3d with uh creeper 4 creeper world 4 and that uh, that was like something that really appealed to me and I, I wanted to actually jump into this and play i don't think it'll be a series but um you know it's i enjoy games off camera as well and and uh creeper world is one of those strange ones and i'm actually i am really looking forward to they're doing a new one uh which is 2d which uh 2d like side scrolling which is such a bizarre idea and i love it um i'm gonna struggle to find the steam store page here 
where is it okay yeah like they're doing this almost like sandbox thing or no, sorry like falling sand side scrolling thing with creeper this new creeper world and that really appeals to me in many many ways i love this 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 appeals to me on so many levels i can't tell you it's got like almost a lemmings thing going on um so i'm actually i'm really uh excited strangely for for this uh ixe i don't know uh, where how they came up with that one but so those are uh what I, I would recommend for the steam sale if you're ever curious what i like pick up for you know myself um i actually picked up starcom nexus which was like a space sim um i'm always looking for a new space sim i've never found that kind of like perfect space sim that that i can really sink a lot of hours into but i'm hoping starcom nexus is it uh, i picked up a bug fables which i've heard very good things about it it's kind of like a paper mario like um i picked up under rail which i know is highly recommended i can't promise i'll do a series on it but i kind of wouldn't mind trying to do a series on it i don't know um i picked up void stranger uh based on uh, my friend birdie's recommendation and a lot of people have been actually recommending this i don't again i don't think it'll be a series but i, I I'm, I'm gonna be playing it this is a weird one squid's odyssey looks looks really cool and it looks super overlooked but this is a kind of a turn-based tactics game with like little fish and it's something about it it, it kind of it felt like um that game yeah skulls of the shogun it felt like skulls of the shogun to me a little bit in that it has it's like a turn-based tactics game um but there's no grid and it works more on like uh, kind of like a radius like you can only move so far or, or in, in, a, in a radius around each character is what it kind of looked like to me so I'm interested in this I might even showcase it um, do like a let's try of it which seemed cool zero ranger which I'm very excited to try this I'm not much for bullet hills but a lot of people said this this is a game worth playing even if you're not into bullet hills and it looks like a lot of fun uh, it's got some really fun kind of like a uh, classic looking graphics, which I, I appreciate. And I also love the limited color palette. I love it when people do that kind of limited co co color palette. The same developer also, I believe they made. Yeah, they, they also made Void Stranger. So um, very interesting dev. Uh, they've already got a, a pretty, pretty cool uh, lineup. I did pick up Psychonauts 2. No series on that. Um, I'll just be playing that on my own. And I did pick up uh, Avernum Escape from the Pit which I might do a series on, um, really depends on a few things. Um, and System Shock, I've, I'm I've been looking forward to this. Uh, I'll probably wait for the, uh, the update that's supposed to be coming out. And uh, lastly, Maiden and Spell, which is another, oh, this is another uh, bullet hell game. It's supposed to be good. Hey, listen, I have, I have broad tastes. What you can expect from me in the new year is uh, I'd like to do more Stalker. I'd like to do more Battletech. Those are the things I'd like to do that I know won't succeed, basically. Um, everything else is like more Caves of Cud, more Caves of Cud tutorials. And uh, those are the things I know that will do pretty well. But, you know, I, I would be lying if I said that, um, you know, I, I, I want to be confined to only the one thing. Thank you very much for supporting me. Um, thanks very much for watching my videos and um, and for commenting. Like I always read the comments, even if I don't always reply, I try to. Um, but uh, I always, I, like I just appreciate everyone that's been like watching my stuff and, and I hope you all have a happy new year. And I hope that you find some fun stuff either in the Steam Winter Sale or GOG um, or even Epic Games if, if that's your cup. Um, but. Happy New Year, happy holidays, and I'll see y'all next time. Take it easy.